So there's, I have three problems in my notes. We'll just do two of them. And let's try to be smart about. Right, so we'll do the first and the third. All right, we got y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals sine of e to the negative x. Looks scary already. All right, step one, anytime you get a higher degree uh, linear, higher than degree one, you're basically going the homogeneous route first. So there should be two homogeneous solutions. So two m values you have to find. So go ahead and find those two m values first. For <laughs> no matter what type it is, if it's a high order linear, you have to get the homogeneous solution. So find both of those right now. Questions on one and two. Those are your two m values. So they're not repeated, so we get the regular way to write them. So now we're going to do that variation of parameters. And we have that system of two equations to solve. So let's write out our actual full solution will be u1, y1 plus u2, y2. We just have to figure out the functions u1 and the function for u2. So the two equations we have to satisfy, u1 prime y1 plus u2 prime y2 equals 0. And the other u1 prime y1 prime plus u2 prime y2 prime equals q of x over a2. So that just came from. The first equation is that a prime on the u2 or is it? Oh. oh. Yes, absolutely. So this comes from somewhere up here. These are the two conditions inside the rectangles here. So those two that we had to satisfy. You could write it out as a Ronskian if you want to. Um, use Kramer's rule form, but with just two of them, you can write it like this. I'll write it out the other form when we do our second one. So we'll fill in y1 and y2. Well, we don't even need to do that. So let's just fill in our y1, which is e to the x. <coughs> and these equal 0 for all x values. So y1 prime is e to the x. Derivative y2 is 2e to the 2x. 
So I just rewrote those two equations with our y1, y2, and y1 prime, y2 prime. So this may seem a little bit tricky. So these equations are actually pretty similar when you look at them. They're not too far, um, not too far apart. Oh, what did I do wrong? Yep, so our q of x is that really hideous function and sine uh, e to the negative x. And our a2 was 1. So sine e to the x over 1. So let's work on that first equation. It looks less bad. So we got two equations, two unknowns. So we're going to do our best to solve. So let's rewrite our first equation down here. <coughs> u1 prime e to the x plus u2 prime e to the x, e to the x. So I rewrote e to the 2x as e to the x times e to the x. You add two x's together, you got 2x. So why is this useful? Factor out e to the x. Yeah, factor out e to the x. So will e to the x ever equal 0 for any x value? Nope. So zero product property says that first term has to be 0. That second term is never going to be 0. So if we solve for u1 prime, it's pretty easy to do. So if we could figure out u2 prime, we would know u1 prime pretty much right away. So we're going to use substitution now. So we're going to sub out for u1 prime in the second equation and put this version in there. So go ahead and do that and see what you get. And hopefully you'll be able to solve for u2 prime. So any algebra questions? No, everybody's OK? So we got u2 prime. It's not u2, but it's the derivative of the function we want. So we're just going to take an antiderivative. And hopefully a u sub will make that work out nicely. Before we get to that, let's go ahead and write down u1, because u1 is really similar to u2. It's just negative times e to the x.
So negative e negative 2x sine e negative x times e to the regular x. So we add those powers together. We have e to the negative x sine e to the negative x. So we've got u1 prime and u2 prime. So all I have to do is anti-differentiate the two. So u1 is the antiderivative of u1 prime dx. So it's negative e negative x. So I don't want to use the letter u, even though I technically use u1 and u2. I haven't actually used the letter u by itself. But I think it's better to just use, go with a w sub here. So I'm going to use the letter w. <coughs> what is a good choice for this substitution? Um, e to the negative x. E to the negative x. Looks like it's going to work out as well as any u substitution can work out. We even took care of the negative sign at the same time. Let's just sign you. What's that? Just double my regular U. All right, so sign cos W negative, because cosine turns negative. All right. And then unsub, of course. Oh, we get a plus C. We're going to have more than one constant, so I'm going to call this C1. And finally, cos E negative X plus C1. All right, so that is our U1 function right there. So any questions on our antiderivative? U2 is similar, except I don't think our U sub is going to work out quite so well, but we'll get through it. So this is U2 prime <coughs> DX. U2 prime is here, e negative 2x. So I think the same w substitution is a good start. So let's go ahead and apply this w sub. So e to the negative 2x is, of course, e to the negative x times e to the negative x. So one of them is going to come out with the uh, dw. And then one of them will be left over, so we'll just call that w. <coughs> so this is e to the neg negative x, e to the negative x. So one of them goes away with the dx substitution, and the other one will turn into a w. How in the world do we integrate this? Yep, integration by parts. <coughs> so U D. Now technically you don't really use the U and the V letters, you just temporarily use them. So you're back into well, in our case W's in uh, one step. So we just have to pick u is w, dv sine w. The negative should go with one of these two. Doesn't really matter which way, which one you choose. We'll just attach it to the w instead of the sine w. So du negative negative dw, regular v cos w with the negative sign. So uv is w cos w minus integral v du. So those two negatives will cancel. Cos w dw. And then unsub. <coughs> So 
So that's u2. So we got u1 above, oh no. u1 is up there, u2 is down here. So putting our answer together, so our u1 negative cos e negative x plus c1 times y1, which is e to the negative x. plus u2 e negative x cos e negative x. We're going to sign e negative x plus <coughs> c2. And this whole thing times e to the, uh-oh, did I mess that up? I think it was x and 2x. Yeah, it should be e2x. Now this is okay to leave it like this. And we should have, we had a degree two, so unless we have initial conditions, we're expecting two constants. So here's how the constants fit in. And you can of course distribute if you want to. Uh, so if we distribute this, we'll have negative e to the x cos e negative x. I'll write the constant terms at the end. We got a little work to do over here. <coughs> so we have plus e to the x cos cos e negative x minus e to the two x sine e negative x, and last up our constant c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the 2x. Oh, and I don't have answers in my notes. That's good, so it can't be wrong. The first two, two terms came as a prep. Oh, do they? Yeah, it looks like they do. Seems highly coincidental. That's not something to expect in general, in terms to be canceling out like that. So if you want to check this, you actually don't have to check the full uh, finding deri derivatives of this would be a slight pain. Um, I know that the second part of this right here, if I plug it in, it will add up to zero. Why is that? What do these two solve? They solve the original y1 double prime minus 3y1 prime plus 2y1 equals 0. They solve this equation right here. So if I plug them in, that's the reason I can multiply them by a constant. Any constant I want, it's just going to add up to a multiple of 0. So it'll add up to 0. <coughs> so if you want to check these, you really only need to check the non-homogeneous part of the solution, the particular part. So you take two derivatives, plug it in carefully, and hopefully you'll get to uh, somewhere, wherever we started, sine of e to the negative x when you plug them in. It should reduce down to that. So next problem, <coughs> y double prime plus y equals tan x. So I'm going to solve these with the Ronskian instead of just writing down the equations separately. Well, I should say you're going to solve them with the Ronskian. So find your homogeneous solutions. And then, so 
So take another minute to write this down. And I think you'll have repeated here. You should get repeated solution. So you want to be careful about how you construct y1 and y2 when there's a repeat. You may have to go back, flip back in your notes to look at repeats. And they may even be imaginary. So I'm looking in section 20D, and there's four versions we can write out when there's complex roots. Of all four versions, looking at what's on the right side is tangent. What makes the most sense to use? Yeah, let's go use the ones that have trig in them, because we have trig on the right side. So we might as well go full trig, basically, instead of uh, having e to the ix and e to the negative ix. You can go that way if you want to, but I recommend, because I see trig on the right side, I'm going to go with trig. If I saw, like the last time, e to some power of x, I'd probably go with one of the other choices. But you have four choices. Make a good choice. So we're going to go the last one. So this is section 20D. I think somewhere along the way, I said it didn't matter if you choose B to be your positive or negative. Uh, so just go ahead and choose it to be the positive version. So B is A is 0, B is 1. So from here, all we're going to do is swap out those constant terms, the c1, c2, and put in variable functions. So that's going to turn into a u1 and a u2. So here's our two homogeneous solutions. And we're going to take out the constants and put in functions of x. So those will be u1 and u2. And we're doing this because all derivatives of tangent, they never actually disappear. You keep taking more and more derivatives it will get uglier and uglier. Your first one is uh, what secant squared, and it basically gets worse after that. That's your least bad derivative. So we're going to replace. We'll go with the u1 in the first one and the u2. So replace constants with functions of x. So we're going to go the Ronskian route. So let's write out this W is for the Ronskian W. 
not for a W substitution like last time. So this is y1, y1 prime, y2, y2 prime. So we better write out y1 is cos, y2 is sine. So write their derivatives below, so that's w. You're going to need to compute this determinant anyways, so this is cos squared minus negative sine squared. And what does that reduce to? One. That is 1, so cos squared plus sine squared is 1. Can't get much better on scan than 1. Now if you have 0, you're going to be divided by it, so if you have 0, something went wrong. So you're not going to get a solution if you're on, if you're if this Ronskian is zero. It's possible when you do the uh, compute the other Ws where we swap out columns. So going back up. So Kramer's rule: we're going to swap out uh, a column with this special column right here. So that's the Q QX over AN, and then the rest zeros. And I think I use W1 and W2. D yeah, so we'll go W1 and W2. So Q of X over A2, that was tangent X over, there's no coefficient, so it's tangent <coughs> X over 1, or just tangent X. So that's our Q over A, 2. So column 1, this is tangent times cosine, and that seems like it should reduce tangent is sine over cosine, so this will reduce down to sine. And let's go ahead and find W2 while we're at it. So W2 is replace column 2 with that QX over A2 followed by 0 and we copy our same first column cos X negative sine X so we have 0 minus oh hold on I said one thing and wrote something else. Y1, Y1 prime. <coughs> so we got zero minus negative sine x tan x. So I don't know what will be better, either sine times tangent or sine squared over cos. We'll see when we plug these, or when we uh, reduce this down. So the other part of this, u1 prime is w1 over w. So this is the Kramer's rule part right here. <coughs> now all I'm doing This is the Kramer's rule part right here. So each term is its own special Ronskian divided by the regular Ronskian. So that's sine x over 1, or sine x, and u2 prime, w2 over w. So our w2 is sine squared over cos divided by 1. Now 
Now we have to anti-differentiate. So you get u1 is antiderivative u1 prime dx. This one's super easy. <coughs> So u1 is negative cos x dx plus c. u2 looks a little more tricky. How in the world are we going to integrate this? You get that means switch sine squared x to 1 minus cos squared x. Sounds good to me. So. I don't really see a u sub that will work. So if I go with cosine, the derivative is sine, not sine squared. So that's not going to help. If it was just sine over cos, I could uh, make that move. But that's not going to work. So let's rewrite. We'll go algebra. So sine squared is 1 minus cos squared over cos. Anybody knows off the off top of their head? I don't feel like no one secant plus tangent. That seems right. You have to do a weird. Uh, what do you have to do? You have to multiply by secant plus tangent, divided by secant plus tangent, and then <coughs> make a u sub, and then it turns into a one over u. So getting that is not terribly easy, but that's the antiderivative of the secant. Oh, and I was lazy. I need to call. The constants by different names. So we got constant one, constant two. There's u two. Oh, Ellen. Yeah, Ellen. Of that. That's the uh, antiderivative of secant right there. So that should probably be on your cheat sheet. Your six regular trig derivatives and antiderivatives need to be either in your brain or on your cheat sheet. All right, and writing the combination of these two. So y is u1 y1 <coughs> plus u2 y2. I don't know why there's a dx hanging out of my u1. Negative cos x plus c1 times y1. It's important that you keep track of which one was y1 and which one was y2 because I need to multiply multiply u1 by y1. I don't want to multiply u1 by y2. You'll get the wrong answer that way. So you have to keep track of which two are paired up. So my u1 is paired with the cosine x. So there was u1 and this was cos x plus u2 ln seek plus tan minus sine x plus c2 <coughs> times sine x. You could distribute on this, and there may be something that cancels. Yeah, so it'll add up to be 1. Negative 1. Or neg yeah, negative 1. So you can do some reduction and simplification if you want to. But I'm just going to leave it like this. So this is a completely OK web work answer. I recommend you don't spend much time simplifying because it introduces a possibility for errors. And also, uh, your simplification is not going to look like somebody else's simplification. So most of us will come to this answer first, and then our answers diverge as we start to simplify. 
So this, in terms of grading, this is the fastest, easiest for me to grade, because I see where everything is, U1, Y1, U2, Y2, and it's all laid out right there. Uh, if you spend a lot of time simplifying, I have to like, unsimplify your stuff or make sure your answer actually works back in the original. So that was our second problem. Now if you want to check, I recommend you bring your constants outside. It's like we did before, put write your constant terms at the end, and then just take the derivative of the non-constant terms, because you're assuming the constant terms should work out to be your homogeneous <coughs> solution. And it's just not very hard to separate your constants out. Um, and actually, if you're just going to check, you can basically just cross those terms out and then check that way. That's not the correct answer for your, uh, for your answer to the ODE, but for checking purposes, <coughs> that'll be a, the fastest way to check. Does that still work if it's like a repeat answer? You just cross out the, the X term that's on the constant too, though? You shouldn't get re... So you shouldn't ever be looking at something like this. And this is not related to this answer that we just got. But if you ever get something that looks like this, something went wrong. Oh, I meant like, a, like when you solve for the homogeneous solution, you get like an M. So, so the like minus 1 squared or something, and you get like that linear type coefficient. So these terms are the one that usually looks like e to the mx except this time they look weird because they were uh, complex valued. So they don't show up in the e to an integer x. <coughs> so we have one more section before we get into Laplace transforms.